Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm gonna to show you a factory built home from start to finish. The increased cost of home ownership in 2022 likely has more people looking at the offsite construction space because I've been getting a lot of comments and questions from people who seem like they might be newish to the idea. I'm certainly not happy about how much home prices have gone up, but I've thought for years that people have been sleeping on factory built homes, so maybe, just maybe, it's finally their time to shine. Over the last few months, I've been showcasing what I think are some of the coolest offsite constructed homes available, but I thought it might be fun to show you what's actually involved as you progress through the steps from window shopping to move in ready home. What I'm gonna do is recap the entire process from start to finish of a project we finished, including home tour, to show you how it all turned out. The home in question is a 27 by 60, three bedroom, two bathroom, double wide with two living spaces and a semi open floor plan. A bit of backstory on the home, it was being used as an office, but we moved into a different office. So we started looking for a piece of property to move it to so we could put it for sale. That means this home wasn't shipped directly from the factory to the property I'll be showing you. We already had it. That gave us a little bit more flexibility when looking for a property because we didn't have to find something before the home arrived. There was no crunch time and that definitely worked in our favor. One of the most common questions I get on my channel is, where can you put homes like these? And that's a good question. In the town I live, we are able to put both manufactured and modular homes on city lots within town as long as the person who developed the lots didn't put any restrictions or building scheme on the development. That, and they have to be at least 18 feet wide. Right away, that eliminates a lot of the homes that I showcase on my channel from contention here. However, since we weren't in a rush, we were able to find a very unique property that gave us a few more options. The property is just under 0.4 of an acre and is zoned mobile home park, but it doesn't meet the minimum requirement to actually be a mobile home park with more than one home. So most people probably looked at the property and thought it was pretty useless which meant good deal for us. Since the property zoned mobile home park, technically we could have put a 14 wide manufactured or modular home on the lot. You get the flexibility of home width that comes with the mobile home park zone while also having ownership of the land. I wouldn't say this is common, but options are available if you're patient and know what to look for. A good place to start is to read the zoning bylaws for your area. That'll tell you what you can put where. Our home is a 1,560 square foot double wide and whoever buys it can live in it as a primary residence just like any other home or they can use it as a one unit mobile home park and sell the home and keep the land and rent it monthly. When we purchased the lot, it was raw land, meaning it hadn't been serviced and needed to be cleared. So right away, that scares away a lot of potential buyers. Even though the lot is within city limits, it didn't have access to city sewer. So we had to have a septic system installed. Power had to be brought in from across the street and the water service from the road. It had nothing. Before we moved the home over, we cleared the lot, started the septic system, and had a concrete pad built for the home. Before we decided where to put the home, a few things we took into consideration were view from the road, view from the windows, and where made the most sense for the septic system. The final factor we had to take into consideration when deciding where on the lot we'd put the home was the ability to have the home delivered by the trucking company. We didn't want to use a crane, so we needed enough room for the truck to maneuver on the lot and get the home placed on the concrete pad, which takes a lot more space than most people think. In my experience, people usually seem to underestimate how much room is actually needed to deliver a manufactured home. Keep in mind, what we're talking about is a home that travels down the road. It takes up a lot of space. If you're preparing your own lot and you think it might be a tight squeeze, try to give yourself more space than you think you'll need and it'll probably take more space than that. After all the prep work was done, we had plenty of room for the delivery of the new home, and that's when things really started to take shape. If you haven't seen a home travel down the road and you get a chance, I highly recommend you take it. It's one thing to see a home on the highway, but a completely different story watching it go down a side road or better yet being backed into its final location. The skill these drivers have to get these homes into tight spaces will blow your mind. Because of the size of the lot, moving this home into its location was fairly uneventful. We were only moving it about 10 kilometers to a lot with more than enough space, so this move is what the drivers would consider a walk in the park. Because it was a short distance, we had one truck moving both halves and they were able to do it pretty easily in a day. If the home would have been coming from a factory and covering a large distance, there is a chance it would have arrived at the same time on two separate trucks. After they unloaded both halves of the home, it was time to move the furniture in. No, 
not so fast. There are homes that can be moved into the same day they arrive, but a double wide manufactured home is not one of them. The two halves of the home had to be joined together. Finishing work had to be done on the interior and exterior of the home. Decks and steps had to be built and services had to be connected. We hired a setup crew of builders who put the home together and did all finishing work required. We also hired tradespeople to hook up the sewer connections, water connections, natural gas, and power. If all goes well, the setup crew we use can have a home set up eight to 14 days after it arrives, depending on the size and complexity of the home being set up. That's with a setup crew of two guys, a plumber and an electrician. So that amount of time could certainly be cut down with a bigger crew, smaller home, or both. Let me show you how it turned out. This home is a three bedroom, two bathroom double wide with a footprint of 1,560 square feet. I would consider this a mid-sized double wide in my area and in that size range, most people who toured it were fairly excited about the layout. The main bedroom is quite large at 13 feet by 16 feet and has a walk-in closet and an ensuite. The living room has a ton of natural light from three windows and has multiple arrangements for TV placement and furniture setup. It's open to the dining room, which then opens to the kitchen. The kitchen has a peninsula for bar stools, lots of cabinets and counter space, and access to the back deck through the laundry room. If I was to order this home again, I would definitely put a window in the back door because the laundry room is a bit dark without the lights on, and even a small window would solve that problem. The end of the home opposite the main bedroom has a second living space, a bathroom, and two more bedrooms. There are a couple things I really like about this home. Number one, it's a split layout with bedrooms on either end of the home. This is my favorite configuration for homes because if you have kids or guests, they essentially have their own end of the home to do with what they please. Number two. Number two is the second living space. This space could be used for so many different purposes, a play area for kids, a man cave, an office, a TV room, or what might be the most requested room by the over 60 crowd, a craft room shocking amount of crafters out there. All in all, it's a great layout with lots of space that I would highly recommend for anyone, but especially families. Just works, you know? There you have it. If you ever wanted to see the process of an off-site constructed home go from bare land to move-in ready, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you didn't, well, what are you still doing here? That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.